Hello. As you can see, I am you. What I'm about to tell you, it'll be dangerous. If it fell into the wrong hands, it could have devastating consequences. Our show takes place in a world where the agency, the Shekai, mm -hmm. this British, bizarre British secret service, is maintaining its secrecy by um, with fake news, mm -hmm. with fake news stories. And so something happens and they have their own interpretation which ends up in the headlines and it makes you not trust what you read, which is obviously very relevant now. The great thing about spy stories is that the protagonists have, have to keep secrets both from the people they work with and their loved ones. So there's a recipe for great drama there. And in the supernatural world, obviously if you have, if you're a superhero or down someone with abilities, like a spy, you can't really tell people what you do. You can't say, hey, I'm Superman, or yeah. I can, I've got extremely sort of strong telepathic abilities. So you've just got secrets to the power of 10, and that's a thrilling base uh, from which to create amazing stories and amazing characters. So Sam Holcroft was a biologist before she became a writer, a playwright, and then a television writer. I was a doctor before I became a television writer. So all of us together were very, and before we even came on board, they're the driving uh, kind of force and how to come up with these, these extra variant abilities was abilities that exist in nature, not necessarily in humans, but biology that could exist in other species, in plants, in, in this natural world that we live in so that they're not, doesn't seem like magic. So that was a very big kind of organizing principle for us. Like these aren't magical like abilities, these are grounded in reality and that there might be some, the, the idea is that when you see what these people can do, what these special agents <coughs> can do, that you would think, huh, like, maybe I know someone who could do that. Maybe that, maybe there are people, like, maybe this layer of special people does exist and is kept as a secret and we just don't know about it because it's all feasible. It could exist and it doesn't seem that far-fetched. We think everyone's experienced these things. If you've ever touched someone in a, you know, high static carpet mm -hmm. and got an electric shock, Imagine that a thousandfold. Um, if you've ever had experienced something which feels like telepathy, you've no idea what it is, imagine that power a thousandfold. So these are all things that they're plausible. It's not flying and picking up buildings and throwing them into you know another building. These are these are things that are on the on the edge of the possible. Which was kind of the rules really. while we were making up that no one has X-ray vision. Right. Mm -hmm. No one can fly. No one flies. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Like all rare and valuable things, EVAs are trafficked. They're stolen, smuggled, traded. I'm just trying to find out what happened. You're in danger from all directions, even from yourself. I think I'm being watched. What do they look like? Oh, men that want to kill me. You come up with stuff that you think is clearly fiction, and then you meet people who operate in the real world. Obviously, we're mixing with both spies and people with special abilities in our everyday lives. And they say, how did you know that? That is what we really do. And it's so, and again, post 9-11, as you may know, the Pentagon invited screenwriters to say, if you were a terrorist, what would you come up with? So, you know, where we think like that, storytellers think like that, because they're thinking, how do, you, how do you come up with something that's going to cause harm? Which is obviously a terrible way to spend your life, but that's what we do for fun. Just like the... The extra variant abilities in the show are kind of based on real biology in the in the world. Mm -hmm. The spy stuff is based on real spy stuff in the world. And our the two creators of the show, Sam Holcroft and Al Blythe, did a phenomenal amount of research <coughs> into the spy world, both in England and America. And there's a lot of what goes on on the show that's not so far off from what could be happening in the world. Yes, I mean, in answer to the question, which is the most spied upon society on the planet, you'd think it was North Korea. It's not. It's the UK. Which was news to us when we came on and started writing it. We kept getting, we kept getting notes about CCTV from people. Now it seems really normal because we've been writing about it. But like the idea that every single move you make in London is on camera. Well, somehow. and you see it. You see yeah, it everywhere you, see you go. Them, yeah. But, you know... The paranoia aspect of the show. We're paranoid to begin with, but we're like, more paranoid now. Well, we're more paranoid now. <laughs> yeah. The questions that we present in this season, for instance, you may wonder, she wakes up and she seems to have written letters to herself. Well, how did she know that her memory was going to be lost? All those questions that come up through the season, we do answer within this season, which is basically a puzzle where she's solving the mystery of her own identity. And it's introducing you to the world of the Shekai, which isn't, isn't a flat, like, 
it's it's not all good. You know what I mean? It's not it's not presented as like you know a lot of times the way the CIA is presented as as a heroic <clears throat> agency and saving the world. But our characters aren't saving the world. It's more of an interpersonal relationship story. But all of the all of the questions are answered to launch into the next season. You work for a secret wing of British intelligence that recruit people with certain abilities. You're an EVA. You have extreme variant abilities. Abilities that are only possible at the farthest reach of human biology. What kind of monster am I? <laughs>